Hi, this is Dr. Mora. Today we're going to be preparing a number 19 to 21 PFM bridge. Before we begin preparation, I want to talk about all of the different views that we will use to gain visual access to the different surfaces of the tooth. Our preparation will begin with the inner proximal separation, for which we will use this buckle view. And in this view, we can also see the mid buckle surfaces of the tooth to begin with our mock finish line as usual. I recommend sitting in the 10 to 12 o'clock position for the entire procedure so that both hands can be utilized. Additionally, for lower posterior teeth, it is possible to view the majority of the preparation from a, a more occlusal view, uh, looking down the long axis of the teeth as shown here. It is even possible to view a portion of the distal lingual finish line from this view. The mirror will not be utilized to view any portion of this preparation. For the lingual portion of the preparation, the head is rotated to the left and visual access is gained looking past the maxillary anterior teeth. This view gives us access to the remainder of the distal lingual finish line that we were not able to see before. During and after preparation, our finish lines are assessed circumferentially from the occlusal view with the mirror, as well as checking for a coincident path of insertion and any undercuts. Finally, ensure that the fit of our putty matrix is perfect with the tooth. It should also be trimmed fairly close to the cervical of the tooth and fit passively against the gingiva. We will now begin our preparation with the interproximal separation from the buccal view. We always utilize our left hand to support the handpiece in the bimanual technique, and you can see here that I have added a wedge to our premolar and molar so that we can have a little bit of extra leeway space. Note that the interproximal separation is not done all at once, but rather working from coronal to apical, reducing the bulk of tooth structure. This increases cutting efficiency and control. Next, I use the green mod shoulder burr to begin the bulk of our reduction for the facial areas of the premolar, which will have porcelain. For these areas, the finish line needs to be a 1.2 millimeter depth, keeping in mind that the tip of the burr is one millimeter. Work sequentially from one side of the tooth to the other in a controlled manner, and bring this reduction through the proximal contact on the mesial and only to before the proximal contact on the distal. If we did not reach our final depth with the initial cut, we can begin again working our way across the surface of the tooth in the same controlled manner. We always attempt to reach our final desired depth on our initial pass so that we do not have to prepare the tooth multiple times. Consider the direction of rotation of the burr. This should be changed so that the burr can either be moving with the direction you're cutting or against the direction you're cutting. Our initial preparation here is angled to the distal. We will fix this later. We have lots of room to correct the TOC. Moving now to our green chamfer burr, we will complete the rest of the axial preparation of both teeth with this burr. The reason I began with the mod shoulder in this case was to minimize the number of burr changes. Work carefully and smoothly to not hit the adjacent tooth. Next, we can place our mock finish line on the buccal surface of the tooth, working from one side of the tooth to the other in a controlled manner again. At this point, I am not worried about my buccal lingual angulation. Instead, I look at the tip of the burr to ensure the proper axial reduction. Continuing with our molar mesial axial reduction, consider the path of both teeth before beginning your cut. We can see here now that the premolar is tilted to the distal, and we'll correct that later, but for now we'll make the correct cut on the mesial of the molar using that same controlled working from one side to the other. We notice that the finish line is set more than half a millimeter supra gingival, which is our desired measurement. So we will go ahead right now and set that to our final desired depth. Once again, we do not want to have to re-prepare the entire tooth multiple times. For the buccal axial reduction of the molar, consider both teeth again. 
In this case, you can choose whether to use depth grooves or not. In this case, I will use depth grooves for the molar. After selecting my angulation carefully, I make one depth groove in the molar and then use this depth groove to regain my angulation. At this point, turning the head completely, we can also take a look at the distal lingual finish line from this view. We'll make a couple of refinements here and then work to the distal lingual finish line of the molar. You can use a mechanical pencil to mark the depth of your depth grooves so that you can see when you have reached that depth as the pencil will start to be removed. Angle your burr at a diagonal to the depth grooves to avoid falling into the depth grooves and deepening them, but rather smoothing out the bumps in between the depth grooves. As soon as the pencil mark has been removed, you know that you have reached the final depth and no more reduction is required. Smoothing will be finished with the red diamond burr at a later step. Next, we move on to our functional cusp bevel. From a similar view, uh, this functional cusp bevel reduction should be about 1.5 millimeters, and we'll go ahead and set those depths now. We'll check with the probe to ensure that we are at the correct depth. Once again, we want to go to our final measurement at this time and I marked that depth with the pencil in the same way as we did on the buckle. Again, holding the burr diagonally so that it is not reducing at the depth of the depth groove, but reducing the material between them, and stopping once we have removed the pencil. The lingual non-functional cusp should be reduced one millimeter, which is the width of the end of our modified shoulder burr. So we'll switch back to this burr for the occlusal reduction. We go ahead and set it to that depth of one millimeter that we desire, and place similar depth grooves on the functional cusp, which should be reduced 1.5 millimeters. We'll check our reduction with the probe and modify as necessary to reach our final measurement at this step. Note how deep of a reduction is required for the central groove. The depth of the reduction needs to be from the surface of the tooth, and in this case we have to imagine that deepest point on the surface. After we have completed all of the occlusal depth grooves, we will go ahead and smooth out the surface roughly. At this stage, we use our putty guide to check our measurements. Here we had 1.5, 1.5, and 1, which is what we want. We have one area on the non-functional cusp that is under-reduced. Here we have 1, 1, a little over 1, and 1. We'll need additional reduction at the depth of the buckle groove. Here we have again 1. 1.5 and 1, so the buckle will need an additional half a millimeter of reduction. Keep in mind that an additional half millimeter of reduction is half of the width of this burr. It is not an insignificant amount of reduction, so reduce accordingly. The premolar requires a reduction of 2 on the functional cusp bevel, 2 on the functional cusp, and 1 on the non-functional cusp. Here we go ahead and set those measurements to our final desired depth. Since the lingual cusp is so small, I go ahead and do the reduction and smoothing at the same time here. And now we'll go ahead and set our functional cusp to 2 millimeters. Now in this stage, I actually would have preferred to prepare the lingual axial wall and the interproximal axial walls completely before the occlusal reduction, since the occlusal reduction requires the most detail and attention. It is nice to reduce the bulk of tooth structure circumferentially before moving to the occlusal surface. Again, after our initial depth grooves and smoothing, I'll check with the putty guide and find here that we missed a spot for reduction. We'll go ahead and smooth that now following the contour of the putty guide. When we check again, we note significant improvement here. However, we see that on the mid buckle, we have an area that is too thin. We'll actually 
prepare to reduce that area with the putty guide still in place so that we can visualize the angle required. We remove the putty guide and reduce. The reduction should be coincident with the surface of the putty guide or the surface of the intact tooth. Therefore, we can use the putty guide to find the correct angles of reduction. Next, we'll continue with the chamfer interproximal reduction for the premolar, considering both teeth and the path of insertion. Here we can see that we've already begun to correct our distal angulation, and we'll continue to do so as we work. Reduce the bulk, watching the tip of the burr to ensure adequate axial reduction of half of the burr. Switching now to our red modified shoulder burr, will complete the buckle reduction of the premolar. Here we can see the dramatic correction of the distal angulation, but without increasing our axial wall reduction. Thus, we are increasing our TOC, but we can see that it is still acceptable, and we will assess this in the context of both teeth. Now we use the tip of the burr to assess the width of the finish line. Remember, it should be 1.2, and the tip of the burr is 1. Here we see two areas that are slightly under-reduced, the mesiobuccal and the distal and we'll go ahead and adjust those on a slow speed. We also want to ensure that these wings that we've prepared are parallel with the buccal surface of the tooth. These can be a source of undercut as well. Switching now to our red chamfer burr. While using the red diamond, we'll go ahead and refine the surfaces of the finish lines circumferentially. And while doing this, we're typically working at a slow speed and rolling with the burr. We work carefully from one side of the tooth to the other, as always. In this case, we are not worried about the roundness of the preparation, but only the finish line. And we trace the tip of the burr, following the tip of the burr with our eyes as we work our way around the finish line. We'll work our way around some of these sharp areas to smooth them while we're here. Moving now to our lingual view, we'll turn the head to the left. Viewing our lingual surface, we are still looking roughly from the occlusal of these teeth and looking past the maxillary central incisors. We'll go ahead and copy-paste our angulation from the buccal to the lingual to ensure we have a good TOC and work carefully around. Because of the minimal reduction of the lingual with the chamfer, we can actually do this entire reduction with the red diamond burr. Again, refine the finish line to the final desired depth immediately. Continuing to the lingual of our molar, we'll take our angulation from the lingual of the premolar, from the mesial of the molar, and then begin to work around the lingual of the molar. This way, we copy-paste our angulation from two directions, from the buccal lingual and from the mesial distal, taking one from the lingual of the premolar and one from the mesial of the molar. As always, we work sequentially from one side of the tooth to the other, and we can retake those angulations again from our source angulations. Refine the finish line to the final measurement. We want to compare the distal lingual of the molar to our existing linguals, and we find that there is an undercut area already, so we'll go ahead and increase our TOC here 
and reduce this appropriately. To refine our difficult to access distal lingual of the molar, we'll turn the head all the way to the left and visualize it in this way. The handpiece will block your view, so you will have to rotate it to be coming from the anterior of the mouth and use your left hand to support the handpiece for additional control. With this view and this angulation with the handpiece, we can refine the distal lingual of the premolar and the molar in a similar manner. Immediately after our lingual reduction, we'll see that the cusp tips are very sharp on the lingual occlusal aspect, and so we'll go ahead and smooth those now with the red diamond burr, working in a slow and controlled manner at slow speed. Remember that for smoothing, we should work from one plane to the other with small rotations between each stroke, starting parallel to the occlusal plane, and then rotating until we are parallel with the axial wall. This is the best way to make a very smooth preparation, very rounded preparation. We will now work our way around both preps, smoothing them in this manner, working from one plane with small rotations until we are parallel to the other plane. As we are finishing our preps, this is time to work out any details. There is a rough and bumpy area on the buckle of the molar, and this portion of the video I have actually not cut at all so that we can see how much time and attention is taken to smooth out such a bumpy area. You'll see that we work without hurry, working again, as always, from one side to the other. Note how many passes of the burr are necessary to smooth out this defect. We work carefully until we have completely smoothed the defect. Finally, we run the probe over the edge of the finish line to remove any flash. A final check of our TOC and path of insertion and we'll make some minor adjustments. Don't forget to smooth out your mesial and distal interproximal line angles, as these are commonly missed areas. Leaving a sharp edge in this area can lead to overmilling of the crown, leading to thin ceramic and under reduction. Finally, we'll check our path of insertion and undercuts with the mirror. Here we can see a distolingual undercut on the molar. We'll verify this visually and then reduce with our burr. Slow speed red diamond and it doesn't take very much to reduce out that undercut. We'll run our probe over our margins to have that nice crisp appearance. And we're done. We can assess our TOC and path of insertion from the buckle, as well as the occlusal with the mirror. Thank you for watching, and please let me know if you have any questions.